When you're in a really hard matchup, it's probably easier on your mental if you just leave the game and log on to a smurf. But why is it that the best top laners in the world can manage these tough matchups and still win games? Well, in today's video, the Jizz is going to reveal 8 tips that are essential to know if you are to do the same. And another thing that's essential if you are to achieve your ranked goals in Season 12 is to sign up to the Game Reap website. Our challenger players and coaches upload a ton of videos a week that are professionally edited and they are made with one goal in mind, to help you improve. So get that exclusive access by signing up, links in the description and comment section. So the gameplay we will be watching is of Zhu Kill, the rank 1 player and top laner in EU West who has over 1700 LP. And in this game he is playing Yone into Jace. Now let's take a second to think about this matchup and our champion identity. So Jace, being a champion with range, is going to have the early advantage. He is also very strong in lane generally and has a very strong mid game spike. Now Yone on the other hand outscales pretty much every champion in the game so as long as we get to the late game without being 0-10, we are in a good position. So with this in mind, one tip that is critical to apply is to play with your minions. So what I mean is this. At level 1 in this game, Yone is showing Jace the respect the lane dominant champion deserves and hides behind his ranged minions. Now this does two things. One, it discourages Jace from auto attacking and taking an extended trade with Yone because the red minions will deal too much damage. And two, Jace cannot hit Yone with his Q because the red minions will block it. But once Jace backs off behind this melee minion collision, Yone knows he is safe to move up because Jace still can't land his Q and he is out of auto attack range. This enables Yone to get these three melee minions without losing any HP, all because he stood close to his range minions as the lane started. And even here, Yone is still positioning behind his range minions which makes it very difficult for Jace to damage him. So this is perfect. But this next tip I'm going to give you is perhaps one of the most underrated tips of all time. So tip number two, discipline is everything. And if you're scratching your head and wondering what I'm talking about, when you watch this you can see Jace auto attacks Yone for free and this is always going to be bad because Yone is not getting anything in return. He's not last hitting this minion and he does not need to trim this wave because the minion numbers well it's a 3v3. It's not like it's hard pushing into him. So all he needs to do is what he did at the start. Deny Jace any opportunity to deal some free damage and this simply shows a lack of discipline and even impatience. So you should always be playing with that matchup knowledge and win condition in mind. If I can stay as healthy as possible and get to the late game I win. And just a cheeky tip that will come in handy, unless you're playing Fizz, minions will block your movement. So if the enemy champion runs towards you like Jace does here, Yone should run in this direction because there is space. Instead he steps on his own minions and they are not happy about it, so they hold him up so Jace can auto attack Yone once more. Now let me pause it here and reveal the third major tip for top laners that you have to apply if you want to win your games, trimming. And I'm not talking about your hair, I'm talking about hitting the enemy minions when it's safe to do so, when the enemy minions clearly outnumber yours, or in other words when you're not going to get damage for it. So when Yone cues this minion, not only is he doing so in a safe position, look where Jace is. He is in Narnia. And then look at the minions. The blue minions not only outnumber the red minions, but they are also healthier. Now next up, when we look at Yone here, what can you tell me about him? He's got two swords, his bandages don't cover his nipples, but he also has his whirlwind, so his Q's stacked. So the next time he cues, he will dash forward and knock up enemies hit. This is when Yone is at his most dangerous and this is tip number four. Know your champion peaks and try to use your champion peaks. So even though a level one Yone isn't exactly that scary, his level of scariness changes depending on his cooldowns and the nature of these cooldowns. So Jace decides to back all the way up because he doesn't want to be in range of Yone's whirlwind because he cannot retaliate. But can you see how Yone's positioning has changed? He has forced Jace to retreat behind his range minions despite Jace boasting the minion advantage because he moves towards the Jace. So if Jace doesn't react like this, he will get hit by Yone's knockup for free and it's a nice little win for Yone. So he holds onto it and doesn't even use it on the minions and this is because he wants Jace's wave to push into a dangerous position, so towards Yone's tower. But it will anyway. And this goes back to tip number three, trimming. Whenever you have an opportunity to damage the enemy minions and slow down the push that's going into you, take that chance. You do not want Jace to stack a humongous wave because you can get poked on your tower and the enemy jungler might even want a piece of the action too and you will soon get dove on your tower. Now if we continue and pause it here, the wave is in an awesome position for Yone. Now why would I say this? Well let me draw two lines on your screen. Now what can you tell me about these two lines? Well the distance from Yone to his tower, aka safety, is a heck of a lot shorter than the line going from Jace to his tower. This essentially means that Yone is a lot safer to stay in lane than Jace. And in terms of dealing damage, it's a lot harder for Jace to deal damage to Yone when the lane is shorter. Now if we flip that around, Yone has a lot of room to chase 
always chase and kill him if he makes a really big mistake. So this is tip number five, the big rock freeze. So if you can trim the bigger enemy minion wave so it stalls next to this big rock in the top lane, you are doing work. Like if I'm a jungler and I see this lane state, I am licking my lips because Jace looks so killable. Now if we continue here, did you see that? Why does Yone move all the way around to the top of the lane like this? Can he jump from these brushes like a Rengar? No? Okay, so why does he do it? Well, this has everything to do with your opponent's positioning, and this is tip number six, the seesaw. Now, I don't know if all of you have had a go on a seesaw before. Hopefully, you've seen Jackass, but a seesaw is a balancing act. If one side goes down, the other goes up. If one side goes up, the other side goes down. This works the same way in regards to your positioning during the laning phase. So if we watch this again, Jace goes to the right, Yone goes to the left. But why? Well, if Yone was in his previous position in the middle, he is closer to Jace and in range of Jace's damage. So when he rotates around to this position, so opposite the Jace, Jace can't touch him. And Yone also makes sure he has minions in front of him, so if Jace was to Q, it's completely useless. This positioning trick is a must know and must do if you are to become a great top laner. Now moving on, if I pause it here, we've already talked about this, but let's see if you can remember the tip. So Yone has his whirlwind, but why is this significant? Well, this is peak Yone, and in order to use our peak, we have to move closer to the enemy champion. But Yone also positions aggressively here for another reason. Reason. Now, can you see it? So if you looked at this cannon minion, well done. Jace obviously does not want to miss this 60 gold. So while he is focusing on this, this gives Yone an opportunity to damage Jace as he is last hitting this cannon. Now he gets in a nice trade and forces Jace to use a charge of his refillable potion. And this is tip number seven, trade for your cannon. The cannon minion is the most lucrative minion on Summoner's Rift and players will go beyond sanity to last hit these. So use these windows to pressure your opponent with your abilities. If you get 60 gold, you get 100 HP. Now when the next minion wave comes in, look at where this lane still is. The power of trimming, that's what you are witnessing. And by constantly keeping the enemy minions at a small numbers advantage, so 2-3 to three minions at all times, Yone is able to hold the wave to create the big rock freeze. And you can see how hard this is for Jace to play. But Yone does commit a bit of a mistake here because he allows Jace to kill two birds with one stone and it starts with his positioning. Now what on earth do I mean by this? So if you were Jace, what do you want to do here? Now it's risky to move up because of a potential gank, but you don't want to give up these two minions of course. So really the only option is to use your E and Q together so you can last hit these two minions. So knowing this, what should Yone do? He cannot prevent the Jace from doing this because he's in a different postcode so all he has to do is what he's been doing during this laning phase, stand behind his minions. But if we look at this close Whereabouts is Jace's positioning here? Because he's not in the middle of this lane. He's actually towards the bottom half of it. So if we apply the seesaw tip from before, Yone should therefore be standing towards the top half of this lane. This would mean that Jace cannot touch him, and Yone can still do whatever it is he wants to do. This little error forces Yone to use his health potion and lose a lot of HP, and it gives Jace back control of this lane. But the saving grace here is, as you can see, the big rock freeze. So even after Jace goes doof doof doof, the threat of the jungle Z ganking is too much, so he has to back off. Now at this point, this is a critical phase of the lane, because both Yone and Jace have teleport, and they both have gold to base on. So if this was just a 1v1, Jace could easily teleport back to lane with an item advantage and the minion advantage remember because even though the lane is frozen he does have more minions and beat the Yone. But this situation we're in in this game is different and you will see this a lot in your games because it's never a 1v1. League of Legends is a 5v5 so why is it too risky in that case for Jace to TP back? Well this is because Zed is still in the area. Correct. So now we know that Jace is probably going to run back to lane and because Jace would have hit the base he's been able to buy items. So it's really important for Yone here to try to time his next base as optimally as possible. So the next most important detail to consider is your own gold value. And this is tip number eight. So in an ideal situation, Yone would be frothing if he could back on 1100 gold because this is how much Berserker's Grease cost. But he is still a couple of minion ways away from attaining this gold. So what he's going to do is simply last hit these minions until he builds a big enough wave to hard push into Jace's tower. This would create time for Yone to recall, buy his Grease and return to lane without missing barely any minions. So you are Recall timing is huge and it has to revolve around your gold values and look at what Yone misses in this game. One melee minion, that is it. The effect this has, well it just minimizes your losses and for scaling champions this is massive. So take these tips into your games, let us know if you did enjoy the video by leaving a like down below, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss any of our daily season 12 content and until tomorrow's daily upload this has been the cheers. Oh.